Uh, welcome to Fin Street. We are going to talk about uh, housing finance sector uh, wherein the growth has come back. We have with us, uh, you know, the BFSI uh, research analyst that is uh, uh, Kunal Shah of ICSI Securities to discuss the same. Uh, Kunal, welcome to the show. My first question to you is, we have seen AUM growth coming back to the housing finance sector in Q1 FI23. However, the net interest margin is lacking the loan growth. Your view in terms of uh, growth going going ahead as well as a net interest margin, how it will pan out ahead? Yeah, hi Abhishek. Uh, so on growth, uh, many of the housing finance companies uh, have reported the highest quarterly disbursements in any Q1 of earlier years. Uh, and uh, there has been uh, gained momentum on a quarter on quarter basis. Uh, however, on uh, margins, uh, it has penned out uh, lower than the expectations for three particular reasons. Uh, firstly, the repricing benefit is uh, uh, yet to uh, reflect and it will come with a, a leg. Uh, secondly, when we look at it, some of the players like LIC, Housing Finance, Repco, they have offered discounted rates uh, uh, and uh, uh, largely to retain the customers as well as to sustain the growth momentum. And uh, thirdly, in Q1, generally the off-balance sheet uh, uh, transactions are relatively on the lower side. So that has impacted the uh, overall net revenue. So this has been the uh, three particular uh, aspects on account of which uh, names were lower than the expectations. In terms of the outlook, uh, uh, so in a rising interest rate scenario, the player who is able to pass on the uh, uh, rate hike to their customers would tend to benefit the uh, most. In fact, uh, we have seen many players raising the rates in uh, July uh, uh, okay. and, and we will see the improvement. And under EBLR regime, in fact, uh, most of the uh, players in the prime segment have increased uh, lending rates by 140 basis points uh, and affordable housing finances have also started to increase the rates. So we are positive on the uh, margin outlook uh, as we uh, get towards the end of uh, this fiscal. Okay. Uh, asset quality woes are clearly behind uh, as we have seen uh, most of the HFCs uh, rep uh, reporting an improvement in their asset quality. Many of them have now started coming back to the growth front. What is your outlook in terms of uh, how the stress assets will pan out and how do you see the return ratios profile of majority of the HFCs? So stress pool in the recent quarter was uh, uh, managed much better across all the delinquency buckets. In fact, when we look at it, uh, many of the players on 1 plus and 30 plus uh, DPD buckets, uh, uh, like say Home First and Actors, we had seen almost a 40% contraction in the uh, delinquency levels from that uh, uh, peak. In fact, uh, in fact, even AWAS, when we look at uh, 1 plus uh, uh, DPD, uh, that has contracted more than 60% uh, from its uh, uh, peak. However, uh, maybe when we look at the delinquency print, uh, print that is still slightly away from the uh, pre-COVID average and uh, uh, it will take a couple of uh, quarters to uh, normalize. Uh, so in fact, even though there is uh, improvement uh, compared to what we saw peak during the last year, uh, uh, in fact, uh, over next couple of quarters, we will see further improvement in the, uh, in the, in the delinquency uh, rates and credit cost across the board, I think uh, that, is, uh, uh, that has come out much better than the uh, expected and that has been the key reason for the overall uh, uh, earnings uh, which, which has been there in this quarter. Kunal, you mentioned that disbursers have been strong in Q1 FI23 for majority of the HFCs. Any particular segment or any particular geography uh, which has caught your attention in terms of disbursers? So, uh, disbursals, uh, particularly when we look at it, uh, there has been gained uh, traction, particularly on the self-employed side. Uh, so, no doubt, uh, salary has been holding on pretty well. But uh, self-employed and uh, a loan against a property segment has uh, come back over the last uh, couple of quarters. Uh, and when we uh, look at it overall, uh, say geographically, in fact, uh, uh, there is a demand which is coming in from tier two, tier three cities as well. Uh, so, in fact, uh, there is uh, uh, growth in the prime segment as well as the uh, affordable housing segment. And very interestingly, if you uh, look at uh, uh, maybe the lending of banks to HFCs for the month of uh, uh, July, which is there in the sectoral deployment, in fact, there is month on month growth of almost 7% plus so that clearly suggests that uh, uh, the trend for growth in hfcs is going to continue no doubt uh, some would be the replacement of the debt market borrowing but obviously the trend seems to be uh, better going forward as well 
Well, Kunal, in your report, you know, one of the reports that you mentioned about HFCs, you have mentioned that quarterly rundown rate is declining. Could you explain to our viewers, you know, what is that rundown uh, rate which is declining and what is the outlook over there? So, uh, overall, uh, the rundown rate uh, uh, has uh, come off, uh, particularly when we look at it, uh, uh, say for Repco, it was quite high at 22 odd percent on an annualized basis. It has come down to uh, 17 odd percent. In fact, a rundown rate for Avas is also managed at uh, uh, 6 odd percent. Uh, for whom first it is 5, uh, for Aptus and LIC it is uh, uh, 4 odd percent. In fact, our interactions with many of the loan aggregators also suggest uh, uh, that plain uh, vanilla take over uh, uh, purely to benefit from the rate has actually come off in the industry and uh, a significant portion of the uh, uh, balance transfer which is happening or rundown which is happening in the portfolio uh, that's particularly the enhancement uh, takeover uh, so these are the top up loans uh, uh, which are provided uh, but okay. generally in the rising interest rate scenario we tend to see uh, a relatively uh, lower uh, uh, balance transfer out and that's the reason uh, overall we should see a better uh, rundown rate uh, going forward as well okay one last question, uh, Kunal, uh, since you track the sector so closely, how do you see the valuation re-rating happening in the housing finance sector and which company, according to you, will see the highest re-rating uh, going ahead? In terms of the uh, stocks in particular, uh, uh, given that uh, uh, many of the players are still available uh, uh, quite, uh, uh, quite at a discount to the book value, uh, be it say Repco is almost available at uh, 0.4 times uh, uh, multiple and we have more than 100% uh, kind of uh, uh, upside in uh, uh, Repco. Amongst the uh, affordable housing financiers, we have more than 20% uh, upside for uh, uh, Avas. Uh, and um, uh, LIC, maybe it seems uh, uh, maybe the margins uh, should play out better. And that stock is also uh, trading at almost uh, uh, 0.8 times uh, uh, multiple. There also we have more than 15% uh, um, uh, maybe the uh, uh, return expectations in terms of the stock price. Well, that's a word coming in from Kunal uh, Shah of ICSI Securities, who remains bullish on the HFC sector. Thank you, Kunal, for joining us on this show of Fin Street. Thank you, Abhishek.